Hello everyone, reporting to you today for First Updates Now. I'm Abhas and with me here today is Team 10355 Project Peacock. They were the winning alliance captain in Oklahoma and had a deep run in qualifications in the Ochoa division, ending as the fourth seed and being an alliance captain in the Ochoa division. They just have an absolutely fantastic bot, so much going behind it, and I can't wait to talk about it on Behind the Bot. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Annie Mark has parts and products designed specifically for First Robox competition and First Tech Challenge teams. Many Annie Mark staff are first alumni, mentors, and event volunteers. Visit AnnieMark.com for all your educational robotics needs. All right, guys, let's just start with your drivetrain. I think you, uh, you know, building a new bot from states to worlds definitely have to consider each subsystem. So walk me through your drivetrain briefly, anything that makes it super special and different from other drivetrains. So we're running Go Build a Mechanums. The thing that sets us apart is our drivetrain ratio. We run 10.1 to one. This is about a 23 pound robot. So we go average 11 feet per second top speed. And that really lets us zip across the field and teleop. Yeah. Uh, and so how did you decide to do that? I mean, most teams usually run like 20 to 1, 13.7 to 1. Why change it? Well, so our very first prototype robot this season ran 3.7 to 1 to see if it was viable. Uh, after that, we decided to kind of find the, the limit and try to balance it out. So our, our state winning robot also ran 10.1. It weighed five pounds more. So we knew after that that a lighter robot would be just fine at the same ratio. Yeah, awesome. It's so now jumping into your lift, you know, it's just super, super quick. I think one thing that really stands out to me about it is how you guys went with linear slides and uh, both linear rail for the entire thing. So walk me through that, how designing that went and how it works. So originally the design had three SAR 240 slides uh, because it was supposed to be very light. We, from the get-go, wanted it to be super fast. Uh, but we decided that having the linear rail at the top would help us reduce our center of gravity when it was all the way up because you can see there's nothing sticking up above the claw. Uh, that was an issue on the other robot. We ran Viper slides on that one and it fell over several times. So this robot is uh, oriented towards stability and that was a decision for linear rails on the final stage. Yeah, awesome. And now talking a little bit about the uh, power transmission behind it. What are you using? How many motors? What size spool? Things like that. So it's two bare motors with a belt drive. Uh, it's 45 to 12. Um, we originally ran a counter spring, ran into some issues with that. Right now it's just running straight off the motors. It is a 35 millimeter spool with uh, 1.2 millimeter uh, polyethylene line, so yeah. Awesome, and you know, from a software perspective, are you guys just using the encoders and the motors and that's good enough, or do you have any other sensors you're using to get that automation up there? So we actually had a lot of issues last year running belted mechanisms with motor encoders because if the belt skips, then we have no idea where the end effector is. So for that reason, we have a single through bore encoder on the lift spool shaft that's tucked in there very nicely. That allows us to know exactly where the lift is, even if the motor skips. Yep. So that's that's worked out very well. We haven't had any issues with that. Yeah, no, that's awesome. And I guess my last question about your lift, I see these uh, rods over here. Were those something you've had this entire season or was it somewhat of a late addition, noticing you needed some more stability? So all season long, our robots have had triangular braces for the lift. For this robot, we took inspiration from some of our 3D printers and just ran eight mil carbon rods from the top of the slides to the bottom of the chassis. The angle is, uh, Support, it's supposed to support it in two axes. So they, they push out and they push down so that if we roll the robot backwards, it's supported, and if we roll it sideways, it's supported. Uh, we've had pretty good stability with them. The whole thing is a lot more rigid than it seems like it should be, but it's worked out really well. Awesome, yeah. So let's move on to your arm. You guys definitely have one of the most unique mechanisms I've seen this year for your wrist and arm. So walk us through just how it works and if there were any problems you had to solve with it along the way. So our arm uh, is something that I'm shocked more teams haven't done because um, it's very simple and it uses only one servo as opposed to three from a lot of teams. Uh, we have an axon back here with bevel gears. I can turn that towards you. Uh, very nice herringbone bevel gears uh, that actually sync up the axes of the arm to move together, much like a virtual four bar, except with the uh, two axis arm 
Our uh, counter spring is actually really rough right now, but yeah. Yeah, and so, you know, uh, coming up with that idea, was there any inspiration you took uh, from other teams or other robots you've seen? And just how did it, like, from a CAD perspective, was it, like, very difficult, or do you really encourage teams to try this out? Yeah, so uh, I'll start with the last question. Uh, the CAD was extremely easy. Uh, that was one of the motivating factors of it. It literally took uh, around, like, an hour to, to get, like, most of it finished. Obviously, tweaks were made throughout the season um, or throughout the build process. So this actually started as an intake. Um, I wanted a way to fit an intake uh, roller uh, where my hand is, uh, like that, and then f have it fold down uh, so we could have a rolling intake. Obviously, we don't have one, but uh, um, we ended up using that mechanism idea on this arm after we showed that to one of the Looney Squad members. And he uh, basically got on call with us to convince us that this was the arm that we needed to do instead of virtual four bar. And he ended up being right. It's a very fast and effective arm. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. And so from a programming standpoint, is there anything teams like need to be aware of or is it just really simple? Um, it's very simple, honestly. If you are to do this in the future, um, we at one point put a torsion spring in it so that we could have uh, more range of motion. We couldn't get it to work, uh, but we don't know if it would in theory work or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are we might do more experimentation with that for MTI or NEO. Yeah, no, that that's fantastic. So now moving on to your claw itself, you know, you guys are the ones who created the Looney Claw, something we've seen a lot of teams use this season. So walk us through your current claw, how it's changed throughout the season, uh, and you know, go ahead. So we are running the very latest version of the Looney Claw. This one has not been released yet. It has custom molded silicone inserts that are designed to make use of the Van der Waals effect. So these little nubs increase the surface area with the cone. That's proved pretty effective. Um, they have uh, a sprue that goes through the whole claw so that these stay on. It works a lot better than the original silicone design. And then the other most important thing is uh, these claws with a uh, the inclusion of a redesign of the mounting hardware reduced the weight of this claw by a whole 50 grams, which at that distance from our pivot point makes a huge difference in the amount of torque that this servo needs to exert to move the arm. Yeah, no, that, that's just fantastic. And so from an open source perspective, do you guys know like how many teams use this this season and you know just how it went overall as a project? So right now, there are over 330 teams using it officially. There are a lot more that are just using it by word of mouth. Uh, walking around here at Worlds, there have been five or six per division. So we've, we've had a lot of fun seeing people uh, take our, our idea and go wild with it because the, the whole intention of the project was kind of just to see how far an open source project could go and to give people a baseline uh, because this claw is optimized very well, we wanted to give people a jumping off point to make their own things. Yeah, no, that, that's fantastic. And so I guess my last question to you guys, you know, ending fourth in your qualifications through 11 matches, that's incredibly tough to do. I think a big part of that is game strategy. So could you walk me through how, what your game strategy is, how you decided on it, and what advice you have for teams? So our game strategy, we started the season, we saw the game, and we talked about, okay, there are probably going to be two types of robots during the season. There are going to be the cycle robots and the circuit robots. We saw that you could get more points throughout being a circuit robot, and you could be more agile and more being able to change strategies depending on who you're with. So we played a lot of trying to go around and claim other junctions and try and chase around other teams to keep pressure on them and to be able to have them DB distracted while alliance partners can either cycle or go around and claim other poles. Uh, that worked really well throughout yeah, our Yeah, no, obviously, you know, as I said before, fourth in, in qualification match is just really incredible. Project Peacock, thank you so much for this interview. I think it's been a really great deep dive into your robot, Looney Claw, just everything you guys have to offer. So reporting for first updates now, I'm Abhas, and with me here today is Team 10355 Project Peacock. Thank you. 
This video on first updates now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first team experience and offers high quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.